Trump ally David Pecker, the National Enquirer publisher, who has now, we've learned, this is brand new, he actually asked the federal government whether his group had to basically register as Saudi lobbyists, according to reporting from the Wall Street Journal. NBC News has confirmed this. Enquirer's parent company, AMI, asked the DOJ, and we have the letter, last year whether they had to register as a foreign agent for the Saudis, presumably, because they had this feature celebrating Saudi uh, crown prince through their glossy magazine. And the tabloid now apparently was trying to use this as some sort of sweetener to get money from the Saudis. Now, the question that keeps coming up uh, is after Jeff Bezos has now alleged that Pecker was trying to blackmail him with explicit photos, he also said in that sort of blockbuster unheard of blog post that there was, quote, a Saudi angle that was pushing the tabloid to go so hard after Bezos. Now, Pecker is breaking his silence. The story was given to the National Enquirer by a reliable source that had given information to the National Enquirer for seven years prior to this story. It was a source that was well known to both Mr. Bezos and Ms. Sanchez. Pecker speaking through his lawyer, playing a lot of this down. Meanwhile, there are sources telling the Daily Beast that that individual, Michael Sanchez, who is a Trump World associate, was the brother of Bezos' girlfriend, and that he would have given the couple's texts to the National Enquirer. I go to Eugene Robinson, a Pulitzer Prize winning columnist for The Washington Post. I'm also going to play just, not with sound, but just a little visual that you were in Saturday Night Live this weekend <laughs> on this very story. Uh, yes. you, you could see there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Without sound, you can see your yeah. likeness. How did you feel? Uh, it's surreal, surreal. And by the way, that's the that's the painting school I think that uh, Giuliani is in. It's <laughs> surrealism. It's, it's da pure Dolly. But it was a surreal feeling. I'd never been uh, uh, parodied on uh, Saturday Night Live before. Honored that it was Kenan Thompson, who I think is uh, is ridiculously funny. Very talented cast member there uh, playing you, and uh, as you say, uh, melting clocks all around uh, for the Trump era. <laughs> that makes sense to me. Uh, and again, it's not not my area of expertise. There's so much in this story packed in. Uh, I just caught viewers up here over the weekend on a little bit of the latest, including uh, the yeah. inquirer's defense here of something that is terrible no matter what, if, as alleged, this type of blackmail. But their mm -hmm. defense is, however terrible it may look, it is not the international Saudi intrigue uh, that was alleged. You, of course, affiliated with The Washington Post, we mentioned, Bezos, exactly. the owner there. Uh, but walk us through your view of, of all of this. Well, first of all, what the uh, it, if you read Jeff Bezos' uh, blog post, as I think everyone has by now, uh, what he describes is, seems to me, at base, an attempt at, at, uh, at extortion. It, it has nothing to do with journalism, and I just always, every time I talk about this, I make it clear. This is not the way journalists work. Uh, this is a way of the way, you know, mobsters and racketeers work maybe an extortionist but not journalists you know that said uh, there is this mysterious sort of suggestion uh, of of a saudi angle as you know uh, the 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 washington post has been at odds with um, mohammed bin salman uh, the saudi leader over the killing of washington post columnist jamal khashoggi um uh, and uh, even before that the saudis apparently had a thing about the Post, not just because of Khashoggi, but because of other things the Post has written about. So there's this, so, you know, was was this in, in any sense hmm. some sort of proxy fight between the Bezos and the Saudis, or did the Saudis see it that way? Well, and, and can uh, I just, can I raise the obvious here, which is not yeah. meant as, uh, to be overly complimentary to, to you or your colleagues at the Post, mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. just the obvious takeaway here is a brutally murderous regime that does mm -hmm. all sorts of controversial things to its own people on human rights and as, as, as the Post has documented on Khashoggi. And they appear, uh, at a minimum, very shook and impacted by just the power of the, the words and the reporting from, mm -hmm. from this paper. Absolutely. I mean, one one thing we've learned about MBS, as he is known, the leader of the de facto leader of Saudi Arabia, is that he is uh, he's really touchy. He's very thin skinned. And uh, uh, Jamal Khashoggi got under his skin. Uh, the Washington Post got under his skin uh, just for writing the truth, writing what writing about what he was doing and what his regime was really like. And mm. and it was counter to this image he wanted to project. Now, we don't 
don't yeah we we know that there was this weird relationship between the Saudis and and David Pecker's AMI to the point where AMI had to inquire whether it should register as a Saudi agent um, but but uh, so we know these connections we just don't know how all the parts worked together if they all worked together and, that and part, whether it, that we'll have to find out that part which is new tonight is so bizarre uh, isn't it? it you know if this is not every day that uh, self-declared media companies check in with the feds to say you know hey we might be Saudi agents but hey, we, we aren't doing anything that would substantiate that. And that's why I think this is another piece of the riddle. And viewers will remember, this is the same law uh, that got people like Mike Flynn in mm -hmm. trouble. This is a law that the feds uh, don't always use, but recently have been willing to. Let me read so folks understand for your analysis. The Inquirer basically tells the DOJ it has this special edition on Saudi Arabia, but they say that they didn't get foreign funding, that they were not, quote, approached by foreign officials, and thus this was a business decision. Uh, does that make sense? If, if all of that is true, why would they even be asking? Exactly. Why would they even ask the question? I've never heard of any media organization uh, asking that question. Are we operating as some sort of foreign agent? This is completely new. This is completely alien. But it certainly suggests that, um, that they protest too much in this filing, uh, in this, this question. Why would you raise the question if you didn't think there was something more than um, uh, something more than innocent in that relationship? And I don't know the answer to that question. Right, right. Well, that, and that is a, a, a super intriguing part of this. Uh, Eugene Robinson, mm -hmm. as always, thank you for coming on The Beat. Great to be here, Ari. Hey, I'm Ari Melber from MSNBC. You can see more of our videos right here, or better yet, subscribe to our YouTube channel below. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you're here with us, and we appreciate that.